real true ay ay what hump set 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 yo what's up everyone this is vcv sips and this is my review of the acclaimed title persona 5 royal for those who may not know persona 5 royal is an upgraded and updated version of the original persona 5 Similar to how Persona 4 Golden is an updated and upgraded version of Persona 4. However, unlike that comparison of Persona 4 and 4 Golden, I've actually played the original Persona 5. And I gotta say, Persona 5 Royal has a lot of quality of life changes, a lot of differences compared to the original. However, there's actually a vast amount of things that are similar, but overall, the game is very very stellar but we're gonna be going into that in deep detail in this video review so if you're hyped for this long awaited review of persona 5 royal make sure you smash that like button don't forget to subscribe to the channel as well and while watching consider becoming a member of our community 100 click by joining up on youtube and or patreon for as low as a dollar to five dollars a month thank you all for your support and let's get started with this review now getting started with the review I want to go into a little bit of detail of Persona 5, the original Persona 5. The reason why I want to go into that is because Persona 5, the original one, I actually played it in 2019, the summer of 2019, and it was, and still is, one of my favorite games I ever played when it comes to anything in the JRPG, RPG genre, and it's because of Persona 5 that I got into Persona in the first place. I started playing Persona, Persona 5. I then went on to play uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, which it had Persona 4 characters in it. From there, I went to play Persona 4 Golden, which I already have a review, which you may have already seen already. And if not, you can check that out if you haven't. And now we're here with Persona 5 Royal, as I'm currently right now playing through Persona 3 Fest. So. Overall, my, my track record in Persona is on the rise. I'm getting more invested into this game franchise as a whole as the days and the weeks and the months go by and honestly Persona is one of those games where especially during like the summer or like the fall it's the best game to play inside take your time and to enjoy everything that it has to offer Persona is really unique and Persona 5 updates and upgrades everything from the prior entries of the franchise to be more suited for today's generation and as a whole, stylistically, uh, aesthetically, gameplay-wise, there's a lot of proper advancements that these games have had over the years. And Persona 5 Royal takes the cake with that, for sure. And base Persona 5 has many great things about it. But honestly, though, comparing it to 5 Royal, it's very easily noticeable to see the blemishes in the original Persona 5 when you realize all of the amazing quality of life changes that Persona 5 Royal has brought along with it. Persona 5 Royal starts off the same as the original Persona 5 did, at the casino as you, the main protagonist, formerly known as Akira and or Ren, but we'll just be calling him by his uh, name in the metaverse, Joker, as Joker tries to escape this casino with the briefcase. Now, if you're wondering why this part is the same, and honestly, many other things are the same, is because the first 80 hours of playing Persona 5 Royal is the same exact game as the original Persona 5. For real? But don't be scared off by that because the literal multiple dozens of quality life changes truly make this return to Persona 5 all the more enjoyable than the original by a far long stretch. You still get to meet and group up with a cast of memorable characters like An, Ryuji, Yusuke, Makoto, Regana, Akechi, Futaba, and... Hi, my name is what? My name is um, my name is mm. Beauty Thief. Together, 
to create the Phantom Thieves of Hearts in order to stop adults from corrupting the world with their distorted desires as the Phantom Thieves go and steal their treasure within their mental palaces which are feasibly generated through cognitive science which is a key plotline throughout the original Persona 5 and even more so with the brand new third semester plotline added in through Persona 5 Royal. So do you think Persona 5 Royal is essentially a glorified cash grab? Persona 5 Royal is the definitive way to experience Persona 5. The Royal experience adds a lot, and I mean a lot of new changes to the game that creates a lot more pros that outweigh any of the cons from the original Persona 5 that get revamped and reworked in this new revised version in Persona 5 Royal. Like that third semester for example which I mentioned before, which is a brand new expansion of gameplay, a few extra months of gameplay time to be exact, and it's available for you to go through and adventure into new towns, new places like Kichijoji, as well as a new palace that's added to the game, as well as you being able to continue exploring and maxing out your confidants and social links throughout modern Tokyo as you try to make sure all of your waifus don't find out that you've been seeing all of them simultaneously after Valentine's Day. Hey, what did you do outside the store? Is that... Whoa. I saw the light on in here last night. Did you think you'd just try and trick this romantically impaired fool? You're such a problem, child. I got quite the scoop yesterday. A boyfriend caught cheating. You dick! Take my chocolate, please. Before I crush it. You seem to be doing well. Oh, uh... I was just about to go shopping. Take your time. Oh, see you later. If you survive. In the third semester and preceding it through the main game laced throughout, you're given two new confidants and one updated confidant with a ton of new social events throughout your adventure. Uh, those new characters and the updated confidant for a specific character are Kasumi, Dr. Maruki, and Akechi. And it is necessary to at least reach confidant rank 9 for Dr. Maruki and Akechi as well as rank 5 for Kasumi if you want to have access to the third semester of content in Persona 5 Royal. Or else you end up like this. I don't know what I'm doing here. When it comes to those two new confidants and the one upgraded confidant, I highly, highly recommend you level up Dr. Maruki's confidant first and especially because he grants you a new ability in the game that wasn't in the original Persona 5 called Wakefulness, which becomes a complete and utter absolute godsend to have. It allows you to gradually regain a large amount of SP whenever you are low on SP points, which SP, which by now, if you don't know, it's your skill points, which you use for your various skills in battle and outside of battle, either to fight or to heal. Speaking of working on confidants, all the social links and confidants have had new social scenes and new social link events added to Persona 5 Royal compared to the base game, as well as some updated confidant rewards also for each confidant, or for at least some of them. Completely overhauling Akechi's confidant to fit in within the main game, as well as the new third semester, and much more with the confidants as well. Even many new animated cutscenes are in the game, as well as many new occurrences also, with a ton of available things to do, are now added in the game's in-game calendar for you to experience. Because like I said before, Persona games take a lot of time to play. That's why the game itself even tells you multiple times to make sure you take your time. And that is exactly what I did with this video as well. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. Many other new additions have been added to the game, from the new personas you can use, to some new enemies that you face, to the revamped boss battles with either new or updated phases, new weapons and armor and accessories to collect, and even new third forms of personas for all of your confidants' personas, similar to Four Golden and other uh, persona games that allow that. And there's a lot of new stuff in Persona 5 Royal, even compared to the main game primarily, which I haven't even scratched the surface on. There's still even more to talk about, honestly. Too much, to be honest. 
Now let's talk about Kichi Joji for a bit. Which, by the way, I have played my initial playthrough and my New Game Plus playthrough of Persona 5 Royal on Merciless Mode for both. In Kichi Joji, it's a brand new city that you can explore in Persona 5 Royal. Kichi Joji is now the biggest location to explore in the entire game now, and it has a lot of useful locations and important places that can help you in your adventure. Like the Jazz Club, which you can go to at night and you can bring your fellow friends or confidants to in order to boost some of their specific stats or to even raise their levels. There's also a temple nearby that can permanently increase your SP meter through meditating at that temple, which is huge. A very great new pro added to the game in the Royal version compared to the original base form of Persona 5. And combine that with the amazing Darts and Billiards Club, which you can go to for various social events to raise your confidants ranks and to even boost their fellow confidants baton pass levels, which by the way, baton pass in Persona 5 Royal is available without actually officially forming the social link bonds, which is another huge upgrade compared to the original Persona 5 as well. There is also a new area to take part in called the Thieves' Den, which is a location outside of the main game, which can be a place where you can collect and savor a wide selection of in-game props and items to stylize your Thieves' Den, to access never-before-seen or heard music live events that you may have not seen or heard about from various Persona concerts and events. Combine that with a pretty fun card game that you can play to pass the time with your friends and confidants in-game, with your in-game currency that you earn as you progress through the story, it could be a lot of fun. Though I personally wasn't too fond of the Thieves' Den, though I really like how you can have the ability while in the Thieves' Den to run around as your other main characters and other Phantom Thieves throughout the Thieves' Den. You could play as Kasumi, you could play as Akechi, you could play as Futaba, run around as anyone for crying out loud. <laughs> it was a nice touch. And now, it's time to talk about the big bad con everyone had with the original Persona 5. I don't know a single person who enjoyed this next bit that we'll be talking about from the original Persona 5, but in Persona 5 Royal, it's definitely not the same. We'll be talking about Mementos. <laughs> Mementos normally is an entire drag, a slog fest. It's a very boring place to go and you have to primarily go there for side quests in the original Persona 5 and in 5 Royal but luckily in Persona 5 Royal Mementos was updated in many various ways uh, like how in every single area of Mementos there's now new music themes to help change the vibe as well as the art style and aesthetic for each area and section being varied and different in order to help brighten and change the moods and the setting in each section of Mementos because Mementos is fucking huge. It's the, it's, it's, it's literally like 10 palaces stacked on top of each other. It's huge and thankfully Mementos has got completely overhauled as well in Persona 5 Royal. It makes it much more enjoyable to go through and with Ryuji's updated confidant uh, perk where you're now able to just go through any single enemy in shadow you face in Mementos makes Mementos a breeze and a fun experience to go through and enjoy, for sure. It's not nearly as tedious, monotonous, or boring like it really was in the original Persona 5. One of the hugest reasons that Mementos is so much better and much of a breeze more compared to before is thanks to a little boy named Jose, or as they pronounce it in Persona 5 Royal, Jose. Jose is able to raise your experience, raise your money, and raise your items as you progress. You're able to collect these various flowers and other stickers as you progress down deeper through the depths of Mementos in order to purchase some items, rare items from Jose to help you have a better ease on your adventure, and so much more. It makes Persona 5 Royal truly the definitive version of Persona 5. And I haven't really mentioned it much yet, but I want to go into the gameplay. The gameplay is strictly the JRPG formula that we all know and love from various RPGs like Final Fantasy, Pokemon, and many more. However, in Persona 5 Royal, there's actually a few updates to the gameplay. Like we mentioned earlier, the Baton Pass is much more usable, feasible, and more frequent to use. Being able to use guns in combat, it's much more feasible compared to the original Persona 5 because you now don't lose ammo permanently, which is great. Because in the original Persona 5, 
You use those six bullets, you have no more bullets for the rest of the palace. No more. But now, it's only for the battle. Once you use all your bullets for the battle, it replenishes right after. And along with the all-out attacks, there is now a brand new implementation to the gameplay called Showtime Attacks. And there's multiple Showtime Attacks that you earn as you progress through the game. And each one has a real unique pairing and stylish combo attack that will leave your enemies crying for mercy. What's great also is that if you decide to play New Game Plus, you can carry over your cleared save data to your new game and bring over your personas, your items, your money, even various total playtime scores, special gifts, and everything in between, which I think that is a great way to go about with New Game Plus. And I'm glad that they did that for Persona 5 Royal. However, there are a few cons that I do have at Persona 5 Royal. The addition of the Will Seeds, I'm not a fan of. I felt like the addition of the Will Seeds felt like a last minute addition to try and make the game seem that much more different compared to the original Persona 5. But if anything, the Will Seeds kind of just dragged out the gameplay and it even just pointlessly expanded the size of dungeons. Like there is pathways and dungeons and palaces where I would literally be like, oh, what's down here? And I would think it'd be something brand new just for a new way to get to a location that I've been to in the original game, but nope, it's just a pathway to get a will seed. And yes, if you collect three will seeds, you can get various things for them. However, honestly, they're not required. And a lot of the items that you do get from the will seeds aren't really that amazing. I, I didn't really need any of the items from the will seeds to progress and finish the game. I had no reason for them, so I felt like that was a waste. And like I just mentioned with the palaces being extended in size, mainly for the will seeds, made it feel like certain areas of the palace were just made for the will seeds and not even to make the places and the palaces even more varied and even more special like they were in Persona 5 base version. So even with the cons of the Will Seeds being implemented in Persona 5 Royal, along with a lot of the palaces from the original game, getting a few extra sections that are really just fluff for those Will Seeds, and combine that with Morgana still telling you most of the time to go to fuck to sleep, almost all the time still, in my opinion, I feel that Persona 5 Royal, aside from those cons, is the definitive and best way to experience Persona 5. Persona 5 Royal truly is a polished up and amazing game that if you haven't played the original Persona 5, don't play that. Go and play the regular new Persona 5 Royal version of the game to get the best experience possible if you want to try Persona 5. Overall though, I don't really have much more cons to be honest. Uh, I really have nothing else to say when it comes to negatives and or positives really. Except for when I talk about the third semester later on in this video. But uh, before I do that, I want to let you know that I am going to be talking about some major spoilers going into this third semester portion of the video. So if you want to skip ahead to where it's the outro of the video along with my review score, please click the timestamp numbers that you see on screen now. If you don't do it now, you're going to be caught watching and listening to some major, major spoilers from the third semester of Persona 5 Royal. You have been warned. Persona 5 Royal's third semester takes place between January 1st and around mid-February until early March and the third semester can be very fulfilling it can be however there's a lot of things we need to talk about pertaining to the third semester from how it was integrated to the game as an additional expansion to Persona 5 to the utilization and return of a catchy and having Kusumi being an official member of the Phantom Thieves or should we actually say who we think is Kusumi she actually isn't Kasumi. Yeah, it was the biggest absolute shocker to me when I found out in game. When I saw exactly what happened back in Kasumi's past. Oh, don't be so down. 
We'll reach the top of the world together. You'll never understand how I feel. What? <laughs> Look where you're going! The light's red! Hey! Samiri! It shocked every living daylight out of me, to be honest. Hell, I was confused at first. I was like, what? What's going on? <laughs> but it's just wild. It's wild. When the third semester starts, your mind is going to be blown. The first eight to nine, 12 days of the first semester is the most insane part of the whole thing, in my opinion. It was probably the best portion of the third semester, honestly. Excluding the boss battle later on in the only palace that was added in this edition. Which, you guys may be wondering also, whose palace is this? Whose palace are we in? Hmm, I wonder. Maybe there is a confidant we were working on for a majority of the game that could be a culprit. Hmm, I wonder. Yes, yes, it was in fact Dr. Maruki. Unlike the main antagonist of the main game of Persona 5, Shido, Dr. Maruki actually wants the best for people. He isn't like a normal villain that wants to see the world explode. Maruki wants everyone to live a happy life. His vision is for people to live a happy life, to live in the dreams that they've always wanted, and to reach the goals that they want in life or the things that they desire without having to go and go through the struggles to get there. And I can understand through the Dr. Maruki's backstory why he would do this, but there's many instances throughout even your own life, you watching and listening to this, where you have to go through struggles and go through hardship to reach the goals of your ambitions and your endeavors. That's just how it is, and you can't escape your reality. You can't escape your reality and try and go into another one and make it the new you, the new reality. That's basically what happened with Kasumi. Uh, she tried, or well, Sumire, she tried being her sister, Kasumi, for so long because she wanted to escape the fact that she pretty much got her sister killed. That's exactly what happened, and Sumire doesn't want to live with that. So she's been pretending to be Kasumi this whole time because of Maruki and his cognitive science that he's been working on. Honestly, I was pretty baffled when I found that out. Because I was like, why would you do that, Maruki? Why would you do that to Kasumi or Sumire? But the reason why, overall, is because that's his vision for the world. To have everyone get to be able to escape their problems and to be able to be themselves and to be able to be who they want to be in the world that they want to live in. And the part of the third semester that shocked me the most, which happened in the very beginning of the game, like I've mentioned with Kasumi really not being Kasumi, with Akechi being alive, and Maruki being the final enemy. What shocked me the most throughout those first seven to nine days to 12 days or so of the beginning of the third semester was seeing all of your friends and confidants living truly happy lives, living the lives that they always wanted. Ryuji never broke his leg, An's friend Shiho never committed suicide. So many differences in this reality to the point where you wonder if you should stay in that reality for your friend's own sanity, for your friend's own well-being in a world that they are truly happy in. Hell, even Morgana. Morgana complains the whole entire time you're playing Persona 5 that he is not a cat. And guess what? In this reality, he really is not a cat. He's actually a regular young guy, which when I first saw that, I was like, yo, what the fuck? Especially because he, you, you find him in your bed. So it's like, what the hell? <laughs> oh no, man. It's just, the third semester has so much shock value in the first part that the remainder felt a bit loose because you have time to go and complete the rest of your confidants if you haven't already. You have time to go do a few things here or there. However, there are specific days throughout the third semester that you're actually not allowed to go out. You're only allowed to do one task per day. And for those specific days, I felt that was really annoying. I felt like if I was able to at least have a few moments of time to do other things I wanted to do around those times, I would have been able to get a lot more done. But 
I still had a lot done, of course. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I played through this game on merciless difficulty. I also completed and maxed out uh, four of my confidants personas to their third form. So I did get a lot done in my playthrough of uh, Persona 5 Royal. And for the third semester, the final palace is one of the best palaces in the game. Uh, I love the aesthetic. I love the music theme uh, for the whole entire palace. The music in the entire game, Persona 5 Royal, is stellar. It really is. Just like every Persona game, the music is stellar. And all the additions in Persona 5 Royal make the music even better than the original Persona 5. The third semester is really, really cool, but I felt that there was things that were a little bit loose, a little bit lacking here and there, but as an expansion, it is dope. Don't get me wrong, it is. I just think because since I played Persona 4 Golden and got to experience a post game with more than one dungeon and being able to still go out and do whatever you want on multiple days, it made me feel like that the Persona 5 Royal expansion was missing a thing here or there. Now, let's talk about the boss battle a little bit. The boss battle with Dr. Maruki is pretty damn tough. And I was on Merciless mode too, but yeah. The health bars on this guy, man. He just keeps replenishing his health non-stop throughout the battle too. Like, all these extra appendages coming off him that you have to hit in order to finish the battle. It, it can be a bit time-consuming for sure for this battle. However, I was able to beat Dr. Maruki make him realize that the error of his ways of trying to escape reality whenever you have problems and to realize just like the rest of the Phantom Thieves they gotta be able to progress forward, progress onward through their problems, through their struggles, through their hardships and to make it out stronger than they were before all those hardships came to be. Persona 5 Royal really is one of those games where it really makes you think especially in the third semester if you guys are doing the right thing, if you guys are really making the correct moves, the correct plans towards proper justice for all in the entire world, it makes you think about all of that. Persona 5 Royal truly is not just the definitive version of Persona 5, but Persona 5 Royal is truly the definitive JRPG experience for the current generation of gaming. Thank you all so much for watching this video with so many great things in Persona 5 Royal from the music to the graphics to the gameplay to the social links to the confidants to the battles, the story, the plot, everything from thick and thin, everything in between. I enjoyed all of it, truly. Aside from the few cons I had very earlier in the video, there's so many great things about Persona 5 Royal. It's hard for me to stop talking about it to be honest. There's actually some stuff I didn't even talk about in this video review. <laughs> That's kind of wild seeing as this video is already nearing 28 minutes of runtime, which is nuts. Thank you all so much for watching this video as I rate Persona 5 Royal a solid 9.5 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video review, please show your support if you haven't already by smashing that like button. Don't forget to go subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell as well. If you've been watching this whole time and listening, I really would appreciate it if you enjoyed this review. To smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification bell, stay up to date on the live streams, videos, music, reviews, and more. And consider becoming a member of our community with 100% click to join our exclusive Discord to have a chance at special giveaways to gain exclusive perks and benefits for supporting the channel and more. Thank you all so much for watching this epic Persona 5 Royal review. Please don't forget to share the videos every time I make a new video. It really means a lot. And I thank you all so much for listening and watching my Persona 5 Royal review. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all next time. Peace. Chips on the beat. Pockets on me, what you asking? Black casket Is it way too much to be asking? Black casket Black casket Pockets on me, what you asking?